Hey, welcome everyone in this new video tutorial about the multiplayer combat editor. In this video we are going to review the tech design of MC. What does it mean? It means how I built the logic behind the systems and the features and how they are supposed to be organized with each other and connected with each other. And we were also going to review uh, what are the main type of things you are going to do while using MC. So what type of uh, elements you're going to manipulate. So I'm going to open up that PowerPoint and I'm going to, to start it. And I'm going to explain to you how MC is built using that PowerPoint, uh, starting from your actor. So what is your actor in case you don't you, you don't know what an actor is it's it's a blueprint you created with unreal so that that's something that can appear in your world so that can be your character uh, a weapon or whatever it can be a lot of things whatever you want it to be so in this in this diagram we are going to have a bunch of different types of things uh, which I'm not going to explain right now. I'm just going to explain them as they come. So let's just hit the click button. So MCE provides provide us a stat manager. So what what is this? This is an actor component. So this is something you attach to an actor, and this is going to manage the the stat of that actor obviously and what are stats stats are attributes like health mana energy experience and stuff like that so the stat manager makes it so your actor uh, can have an array of attributes so your character can have else and your weapon can have ammunitions for instance so if i'm hitting click again uh, it's it's giving us new things. So the E stats. So what is this? Uh, it's an enumeration or a structure. Basically, this is just a list of things. So this is the list of stats your project has. So for instance, I was talking about else and ammunitions. Well, they are all contain contained in, in that list. And you can expand that list how you want. So you can create new stats and call them how you want. And these are these two new objects are widgets. So widgets is just uh, a, a ad, so something to display on the screen or in the world, uh, which is giving which is displaying 2D informations. So the stat overlay is just a window displaying each of the stats you gave to your actor. And the stat watcher is an actor that can react to the stat being changed. So for instance, you can create a progress bar out of the stat watcher and the progress bar can automatically fill and um, go, go down and up as the else stat of your actor changes. So we can hit click. So that's it for the stat manager. So we can hit click and we have another actor component, which is the combat manager. So the combat manager can be plugged to an actor and it can use, so we have blue arrows, the blue arrow meaning uh, uh, one of the, one of the box is using another box. So the combat manager can use the stat manager, the stat manager uses the stats and the stat over lens and stuff like that. So you can plug a combat manager to your actor and it gives you access to a lot of new features, to a, to a lot of features for the combat, like damage, damage text, uh, I mean combat floating text, uh, damage type, armor mitigation and stuff like that. And the combat manager can be automati automatically paired up to a stat manager to, to read values uh, and react to values such as the else going down to zero. So the, the combat manager can pair up automatically to the stat manager. And the combat manager gives us uh, several stuff to, to play around with, to play with. So first off, we have a status overlay and a status slots, which we are not going to talk about actually. 
So we're just going to talk about the E team and the alliance table, the alliance table. So these two things make us able to uh, basically set up how we want our team to behave. For instance, we can say that the first team is red, the second team is blue, the, the third team is, is green. And green, green is considered neutral by red and blue. And red is considering blue its enemy, blue and vice versa, and stuff like that. And the E team is an enumeration, so it's a list of teams. You can expand and add any team to. And the alliance table can, extra, uh, can use the data from the enumerator team. So you can set up your in order for us to filter what type of targets can be hit by what type of skills. And it, my click also unveiled the e gameplay tag enumerator, which is an enumerator you can add entries to. And a gameplay tag is something like physical, magical, frost, fire, poison, venom, stuff like that, death, etc. And the combat manager and the stat manager are using the gameplay tag to modify their behavior. For instance, the combat manager is using them to apply uh, damage type effects. For instance, if you hit someone with a fire effect, it might the combat manager might generate uh, a burning effect. And the stat manager is using the gameplay tag to add to how to say that uh, it's going. We're going to keep that for another part of the video. So if I'm hitting click. We, you can add an action manager to your actor. It's going to make you able to set up rules for your actors, for your actor when it's taking actions. For instance, if you don't want your act, your character to be able to shoot while sprinting, you can specify that using the action manager. And the action manager is using uh, an enumerator of actions, which you can extend, of course. And it's using uh, a widget called action overlay, which you can display to view what action your character, has, your actor has, and what current actions it is taking. So the next click brings up the skill manager, which is an actor component which you plug to an actor uh, uh, and it gives you access to an array of functions to deal with skills which are basically abilities that you can add to your actor so if you add an actor a skill manager to your actor it can generate it, it can attach skills to your actor. So as you can see, skills are actor components as well. So when you ask your skill manager to add a skill to your actor, what it basically does is it's adding a skill component to your actor. And skill are basically abilities like fireballs and stuff like that. So if I'm hitting click, the skill manager is using two widgets, the skill overlay, which is basically your ability bar. So like a MOBA, you can imagine a MOBA, a, a MOBA game with the, 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 the icons on the bottom of the screen with the abilities inside. This is the skill overlay. And the skill, the skill overlay is using uh, another widget, which is a skill slot, which is actually the icon of the ability itself. And it has a lot of fit of built-in features you can use to react to game ev events. So that's it for that. Next click is bringing two things, statuses and projectile. We're going to just talk about projectile real quick. Uh, skills can spawn projectiles. So I was talking about the fireball, but you can also imagine a gun or a rocket launcher or stuff like this. You'll need uh, a projectile class to represent that in the world. So for instance, you're going to have a projectile, which is a rocket. And the projectile is an actor. Uh, the difference between actor and actor components is that actor is something which is present in the world. And an actor component is just something that is plugged to an actor. 
So projectile is an alive thing in your world, which you can see. So skills are spawning projectile. What are statuses? Statuses are actually in-game effects that affect other managers. So for instance, this is crowd controls like stun, freeze, frost, uh, burn, uh, fear, and it can also be buffs like, uh, I don't know, frenzied, rallied, uh, command, aura, or stuff like this. So th the statuses are spawned by skills when you want them to be spawned. For instance, I can build a, skins with a skill, an ability, which is a frost nova. And when I'm using it, it's applying a, freeze, a freezing status to all uh, targets around me, which is the, and the freezing status is slowing them down. And this brings us to the status overlay and status slots, which I did not talk about earlier. And these are uh, widgets that behave like skill overlay and skill slots. Status overlay is a list of the a list of icons currently displaying the status that are affecting you. And status slots is status slots is um, is just an icon basically, which can react to game events. So the next click brings a new box, which is an active skill. And you can see that there is a new type of arrow that spawned. The, this this arrow means that the active active skill inherits from the skill. And basically, what this means is just that. The skill, the active skill, has all the properties uh, built in the skill, plus new ones that I created for us. And if you, you, you could guess it, what does active skill do compared to skill? It can be activated and deactivated with uh, a trigger, like a mouse button or a, a, an odd key being pressed. So if we bring up the next click, it shows us montage skill, AI skill, and weapon skill. So these are all, uh, these are subclasses of active skills that behave a certain way. So montage skills say that they always play on animation. AI skills say that they use less bandwidth to communicate. And weapon skills have new features built in for uh, first-person shooters, including recoil and stuff like that. So I created subclasses of the active skill class to what? Uh, how can I say this? To wrap up some functions that are going to be used for the same kind of games. So, for instance, weapon skill looks like. Uh, a skill, it's built for first person shooters, whereas montage skills are kind of built for other action RPGs and stuff like this. And AI skills are uh, obviously built for AIs in general. So if I'm, so we're going to, if you, if you use MCE, you're going to build a lot of montage skills and a lot of AI skills. Uh, and we're going to create uh, their behaviors by saying what do what does they do when when the when the animation for a montage skill what does the montage do when uh, at, when an anim notify triggers for instance you can say that when my character stabs uh, at that exact frame it's triggering the damage output and it's triggering uh, a sound effect and stuff like that so if i'm clicking it shows us new subclasses of weapon skill, which is automatic fire, semi-automatic fire, and charged fire. These are all new behaviors I, I created for first-person shooters. So for instance, auto automatic fires behaves a, cer a certain way. For instance, if I hold my left mouse button with automatic fire, it's going to fire over and over until I, I'm out of ammo while the semi-automatic fire skill is just going to fire once and wait for me to release my input and press again to trigger another shot. And the charged fire obviously is going to charge a shot as I'm pressing my input and it's going to release the shot when I'm releasing my input. 
and the, if the gameplay effect is are going to depend on the amount of time I, ch I charge my skill. So these are all uh, skills you can use and you can customize to, to do different effects when they hit uh, their targets. So if I'm hitting click, it's showing a, a new type of box, uh, an orange box, which is an object, a modifier. An object is basically just something which is really light and cheap to spawn for the engine. So this is something that we oftentimes use for, uh, for a lot of quick actions and stuff we can spawn and destroy uh, quickly. And it's never going to make the game lag if we spawn a lot of them. So modifiers, what are them? Uh, this is an object that I built to modify a lot of aspects of the game while the game is running. So for instance, the modifier can modify the value of a stats. It's using the gameplay tag to modify the value of a stats. For instance, you can say that you want to increase your damage, but only your frost damage. So that's where stats and gameplay tag are coming into play. Uh, that's where the relationship between uh, the gameplay tag and the stat manager kicks in. Uh, the, stat manage, the, the stat modifiers are actually using the gameplay tag to be uh, constrained. Uh, I only want to improve my physical damage, for instance. So, and the modifiers can, can also affect skills and, action and the action manager and also the combat manager. So we're going to build up a lot of we're going to build up a lot of modifiers while working with MCE. So if I'm hitting click, we can see the trigger modifier. What is this? This is just an advanced version of the modifier which implements a new, a new set of functions uh, which can react to game events, uh, such as uh, when I'm getting uh, hits, when I'm taking or dealing damage, when I'm being knocked back, knocked back, when I have enemies or allies around, uh, when I trigger a specific action or stuff like that, this object can trigger gameplay events when uh, the tr the event I w the gameplay event I was talking about triggers. So this brings up the next click, which is the passive skill box. So the passive skill is just a subclass of skill which is always active and it's using a trigger, mo it's all passive skills are using a trigger modifier to bind themselves to game events. And this makes us able to create uh, passive skills like League of Legends does. For instance, uh, we can create passive skills like the character Katarina, the champion Katarina in League of Legends. It has a passive skill, a passive, uh, a passive ability that says, that reads, whenever you kill an enemy hero, all of your cooldown ability resets. So we can create a passive skill that, that is using a trigger modifier, which listens to the combat manager, which says, which says when, uh, hey, I made a kill. So the, the trigger modifier kicks in and says, hey, you made a kill. Okay, let's get the skill manager of that, of the actor having the passive skill. Let's get the skill manager and let's tell the skill manager to reset all the cooldown of his skills. So that's how the, communi the, the communication flow goes. So we're going to, so if you work with MC, you're going to create a lot of modifiers, a lot of trigger modifiers, uh, passive skills, we're going to, you're going to create montage skills, AI skills, and sub subclasses of weapon skills. You're going to create child classes of these uh, skills as well. You're going to add new things to teams, to gameplay tags, to stats and actions. And I think, I think that's what you will be doing most of the time. And of course, if you're an advanced user, you might be uh, creating new features directly in the core components, so the skill manager, the action manager, etc. You can expand their features and build your own from them. So I think that's it for this video, guys. Uh, just just follow the introduction series. It's going to, to get you where you want to be. So hope you guys like this and hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.